Gaining freedom was a dream of most slaves, but never a reality, until the Underground Railroad came to fruition. The UR wasn't underground, nor was it a railroad. The UR was called underground because of its secretive nature, and railroad because it was a form of transportation. The history of the UR began way back in the 1780s. In 1786, even George Washington complained that one of his runaway slaves was helped by a society of Quakers for, for such purposes. Quakers were religious groups of friends, and were also one of the first abolition groups. Their influence could have been the reason why Pennsylvania, where most Quakers lived, was the first state to ban slavery. Two Quakers, Levi Coffin and his wife Catherine, are believed to have helped over 3,000 slaves escape over a period of years. With that reasoning, Mr. Coffin is thought to be the president of the UR. In the years following said events, you would hear about runaway slaves becoming conductors of the railroad themselves. A few well-known conductors of the railroad were William Steele, Frederick Douglass, and Harriet Tubman. Well-known conductor Harriet Tubman returned to slave states over 19 times and brought back over 300 slaves using her shotgun to threaten any slaves that wanted to turn back. A trip on the UR was full of danger. The slaves had to run away from their owners, usually at night. Keep your eye on the North Star was the code word. By keeping that star in front of them, they knew they were on their way to freedom. Conductors on the UR faced many dangers in the North. If you were convicted of harboring slaves, you could have been fined hundreds, even thousands of dollars. Getting caught in a slave state while helping runaways was more dangerous than in the North. Punishments included prison, whipping, or even hanging, guessing that the accused made it to court alive instead of getting killed by an outraged mob. White men caught helping slaves to escape got harsher punishments than white women, but both expected jail time. The Fugitive Slave Act of 1850 made it more difficult for slaves to escape. The law allowed for slaves to be returned to their masters even if they were in a free state. In the northern states bordering the Ohio River, a reverse R.S. sprang up. Black men and women were sold, whether they were former slaves or not. With the help of black vigilance committees, the U.R. continued to guide slaves to freedom until the Civil War itself, when many slaves freed themselves by leaving their plantations and escaping behind Union lines. For those who labored as slaves at the beginning of the war, the legend of the U.R. held out hope and in 1865, when slavery was abolished, that dream became a reality. 